All right, we're back. Welcome to the show. It's MRI Man. And I want to shout out the new sponsor, Starbucks. Because when you dehydrated and you tired the next day after you have only slept about four hours, you grab yourself a Starbucks. Go ahead and go down to Starbucks. Roll through that drive through Reload that card for the 10th time this week. And get a couple of shots. Get that brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso on the rocks and you'll be ready to rock out all these patients and you'll be on one maybe it, it raises your blood pressure a little bit maybe your pulse goes up but it's okay because you're in the medical field and somebody probably can help you if you pass out unless they freak out and forget how to use the defibrillator anyway I'm not really sponsored by Starbucks. With the Go MRI Man, spread the knowledge, motivate the people. I asked you guys on Instagram, shoot me your questions. Um, we're at 20K now. It's freaking nuts. And it just keeps growing, man. I, I shout out to all y'all that the new followers. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Let's keep it moving. If you were an actor in a movie, what would be your dream role? A blade. I'd be the new blade. You know what I mean? And I think it would be dope. Um, fun fact, they used to work in a, a plasma donation center, which is like, you know, they're already basically vampires there, right? They're, they're taking everybody's blood and stuff. And uh, I think I can put a little twist on it. You know, I'll be like, I'd be like Blade, but kind of like from the hood, you know what I mean? Um, instead of a sword, I'll probably have some kind of like Glock or something like that, you know what I mean? It, it, it'd be a little different. It'll be a little different, you know? Maybe have the Glock with like some kind of laser beam on it or something. Any tips for the first day of clinicals? Know your anatomy. Um, know the physics and the trade-offs, um, how to reduce your SAR. How to make a high res image, how to re reduce metal artifact, understand what phase direction is. Um, MRI safety is number one. Okay. And just take notes. Uh, try not to make the same mistakes and be trainable. You know what I mean? Don't make it difficult for the trainer to train you, man. Keep it simple. Should I travel after a year or two? My answer is going to be yes. Go see what's out there, especially if you're in an area where there's a bunch of techs, bunch of schools, competition's crazy, but they're paying low. And I'm talking to you, L.A. The pay is way too low in L.A. Y'all know that. Go travel. Stop taking these low wages for the heavy workload. Get out of your comfort zone. How's your fam and how's the new job? Um, yeah, so I got a new job. It's going great. Um, transitioning. Um, I'm, I'm moving, obviously. And uh, the family's doing great, man. Um, you know, how it is moving. Nobody likes to move. Um, it's just, you know, I got to pack up a bunch of stuff. I got a bunch of old stuff I got to throw away. I got like this old couch. It's like the Nate Diaz of couches, man. It's like, it's hella beat up, man. You know what I mean? It's been through some stuff, you know, some broken bones, some black eyes. It's It got burned, you know. What's the best and worst patient experience? One of them was this lady. Uh, it was a Vietnamese couple. And I know they're Vietnamese because they needed a translator, um, which we had to do over like an iPad, like a translator. And, you know, it was Vietnamese. Barely knew in English, barely. And um, I was like an hour behind, man. I was, you know, and when they came in, I was scanning this uh, this lady's husband. You know, I got him on there, scanning him. And he was like in bad shape, you know, could barely get on, get on the table. We had to lift him on there. But anyway, she was like, you know, I was telling her, I was like, oh, you know, I'm sorry that it took so long. And she was like, oh, no, it's fine. Whenever you're in the medical field, you must... Be very patient. And she was just like, you work hard. You work very hard, very hard. And, you know, I was like, wow, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. And she's like, you got good job. You got good job. You work very hard. Be proud of yourself. Like, I was like, wow, this is nice. This is nice, man. This lady was nice. And 
she was freaking awesome. And then I had another lady that was similar, but she was getting all spiritual. You know, she's like, oh, I had to have someone translate because, you know, she's speaking Spanish and my Spanish is not, not good. And she was just like, oh, you know, what you're doing is um, you will be blessed by God. That's what she told me. You know, God's going to bless you and keep blessing you. And what you're doing is amazing. So that I like. I love those comments. And I will remember that. Probably for a long time, maybe forever. I don't know. The worst patient experience. Well, I want to say one that, you know, since it's Halloween, right? There's one that just traumatized me, man. Like the exorcist just traumatized me. It was just patient, man. Um, they came in. I was going to scan their foot. They're coming in. I'm, we're trying to transfer them to the table. And she's like, can you lift the blanket off my foot? It's caught on my toe. And I lift the blanket and oh my God. It's the most horrendous, horrific foot you ever seen, man. Gangrene, rotten, just death, flaky, skin peeling. Just the worst thing I ever seen. Like literally, that could be an American horror story. Literally. It'll scare the shit out of people, man. It was just, and I had to keep a straight face. You know what I mean? I kept a straight face and uh, I was like, man, this is, this is nuts. And it was crazy because the lady was so nice and she didn't see the big deal about it. She was just like, it's my foot. And she didn't want, basically she didn't want to get the, the foot amputated. It smelled so bad. It stunk up the whole room. I didn't have a mask on. I had to get a mask. And it was just so bad. It was so bad. I have never seen anything like that. I try to Google and look for pictures of anything that comes close. No. It's the entire foot. It looked like a tree branch with the bark peeling off. It was just so bad. I'm telling you guys. It was disturbing, you know? It was disturbing. You can put a picture of that foot on your door, and it would just scare people away. Like, you know what I mean? Like, literally... Literally, that foot was the walking dead. Like, literally. Like, the walking dead could use that as a prop. Like, she can be in the walking dead, just show her foot. It was bad. Favorite exam and least favorite. Fa my favorite exam is the MRA brain because it looks cool, man. It's 3D, you know. You can see all the, um, the arterials, the arteries. It's awesome, man. The Circle of Willis, man. I think it's dope. And then the, the carotids, too, in the neck. I, I like those. When you can get a good one, I think it looks pretty amazing, man. Um, least favorite is the elbow, especially um, if you're on a uh, small, you know, like a regular size board machine. You got a big guy, and he has to lay on his stomach with his arms stretched over his head. It sucks. It sucks for everybody. You know, most of the time, people can't lay in that position. No bueno, man. Next one says, why MRI? Why? Um, I feel like MRI kind of chose me, you know, in a sense. Like, I thought it was going to be so many different things. Like, when you're younger, you know what I mean? Like, in fifth grade, I thought I was going to be, like, a basketball player. You know what I mean? Seventh grade, I wanted to be a pro skateboarder. You know what I mean? Like, you have and then like in high school i thought it was gonna be some kind of rapper or something like that and it's like i don't know you know maybe i just gave up but i don't know you know like and then i got in i was a phlebotomist did that and then i was like oh looking at x-ray looking at radiology and mri was like oh i can definitely do this this is very interesting um so, yeah, man, I mean, uh, I still got a lot of life to live, and I feel like my life and my career can go in any direction at this point. It can, you know, I'm just kind of just following the path. I feel like we are all destined, and um, God will show me the way, man, and just uh, I stay humble. And um, whenever I'm lost, you know, I feel like, God ha has it figured out for me, you know, and at God's speed. And uh, I feel like I had to be an MRI, and I feel like I made a big impact in MRI. 
you know, the, the following is large and I feel like I helped a lot of people. Um, sometimes I'm, I do think about the next chapter, like what's next, you know, what, how can I make a bigger impact on the world, man? Um, how's the Etsy shop going? Etsy shop is going great, man. If you haven't been there, it's an MRI Man store on Etsy. Uh, link is in the description. If you like my show, if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and buy something, man. It helps me out. Um, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with the Etsy store and I, I didn't put any pressure on myself to make sales. I didn't know any, if anyone was going to buy anything, but I'm getting sales every day. And, uh, it's amazing, man, to, to make something, design something and have people out there wearing it, slapping stickers on their whatever cars, skateboards on their hydro flask. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing. And then it's just a lot of positive feedback, too, with the designs. Everyone that sees them, they always love them. And I think that's cool, man. I, I, I like being creative and, you know, painting that picture and putting it out there, man. So I tell you guys, man, never be scared to start something or, you know, don't be afraid of just sucking at something, man. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. Um, I didn't know anything about mics. I didn't know anything about making stickers, designing shirts. I've had uh, ideas and I just watch YouTube videos like you're watching right now. And I just went for it. I mean, that's all it really was. Is, uh, which pays more, the outpatient or the hospital? And generally, the hospital is going to pay better. Um, as you know, in certain areas, they're going to pay more, right? The more expensive areas, the more upscale areas, the hospitals there will pay more. The ones that are in bigger cities, definitely going to pay more. But then you also see some traveling jobs that, you know, have you going out in the middle of nowhere. Um, those can pay pretty well, too, if they have a lot of trouble uh, getting getting texts. But what's difficult about your job? And um, I would say, you know, if the job and the the people surrounding the job if uh, you know the facility is not organized and there's a lack of you know team effort or teamwork or unity or you know what i mean if there's no safety policy if there's no one to back you up on things and help you um that's when it could be very difficult uh you can be in difficult situations like if I have an implant and then nobody can help me find information on this implant, uh, I have no one to call. Um, if I have no one to help with like protocols, um, if I don't have a radiologist that is willing to help me um, figure out if it's safe to scan a patient or what protocol to use, um, if you don't have coworkers that are willing to pick up the, the slack, um, if you're getting bombarded by doctors and nurses uh, pushing you to do more than what you can do because you're only one man, um, you know, that puts it, puts a lot of stress on a tech. Um, if you're trying to rush them or overwhelm them by just keep calling them or, or you know, yelling to, at them or talking down to them. And, you know. If it's like one man versus everybody else, it's like that's not fair. You know what I mean? Um, that that could be a difficult part of the job. Another difficult part could be uh, just difficult patients. You know, I've had paraplegic patients come in. We have to use something called a Hoyer lift to lift them up and put them on the table. You know, pretty much just dead weight. And, uh, you know, I have people in there uh, that you know, can have allergic reactions, they can, they're not breathing, so you got to run in there and act quick, patients screaming in pain, people, you know, just patients sick, complaining, and, and, you know, crying, and it could be a mental toll on a tech, or, but it is a fulfilling uh, job, when you get, you get everything done, you get your work done, you get these scans done, these critical scans, so they can uh, help treat the patient or send them where he needs to go, he or she. Um, so it's easy to get lost in the sauce, but it's like 
you got to focus on the goal, what you got to do and, uh, be uh, passionate and, uh, show, uh, the, the sympathy, uh, to the patient and let them know that you care, but at the same time, don't let it affect your work. You know, you can't get so emotional where you just can't do your job anymore. You know what I mean? If you took it too much to heart and then you're like freaking out and you're like, oh, I can't scan. Oh, you know, you start you get wobbled. It's like, nah, dude, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta keep going and just go stay focused or you can't, you know, everyone starts hitting you up, calling you. Oh, do this, do that. Oh, verify this. Oh, what? Uh, stay, stay later. Do this, and like, all these things going on, and you can't. You know that can cause some techs to have anxiety. You know what I mean? And you gotta like kind of zone that out and stay focused, one at a time. Keep it moving. I can do what I can. I'm one man. Tough luck, you know, but. I would say, yeah, that can be difficult, too. Just stay stay focused, man. Stay hard, too. You know, don't let people walk over you, man. Take advantage of you because I feel like everyone deserves uh, respect. But, uh, you know, it's a job, man. Every job is going to have its thing. And uh, you get better. Trust me. You get tougher. You get stronger. You get faster from what I've seen. So don't, don't let it break you. And uh, if you have a bad day, just know that you have become stronger after that bad day. The stronger you are, the better tech you're going to be. And, uh, you know, y'all hang in there. And uh, like and subscribe. All right? On a lighter note, uh, <laughs> we got all serious. Um, yeah, man, I've been trying to, you know, take my fitness and my health more serious. Um, and, you know... Trying to figure out a health plan. I got a lot of healthy snacks, a lot of protein shakes, protein bars, chips, all that. Um, I ordered a, a smartwatch, so I'm going to start counting my calories, you know, seeing what I burn. <clears throat> but uh, I want to do this. Uh, shout out to the homie Anthony. I want to do that uh, challenge that uh, I think it's like 75 day challenge. Um, from, from the top of my head, what I can remember, it's uh I think it's like a gallon of water, two 45-minute workouts, one outside, read for, I don't know, read for 30 minutes. I'm not sure. No alcohol, 75 days, I believe. Um, I do want to start that challenge soon. I haven't been able to post so much, but I'm going to do my best to post more. Um, other than that, you guys can catch me on tour in your local city. Uh, down below, I'll be in LA. No, I'm just playing, dude. Not yet. Not yet. But, uh, anyway, you guys, um, happy Halloween. I got my scream shirt on. Um, happy Halloween, man. Have a, have a good month. If I don't see you, um, if I don't make another video, I'll catch you on the gram. That's it, man. Let's go.